Hello everyone, welcome to the case scenario discussion. So in this case, first we'll have a look at the case, then we'll talk about the diagnosis, how we are going to manage, and then we'll have a very brief review based upon the latest guidelines. It is not a replacement for your existing uh, detailed reviews given in textbooks, but this will help you in summarizing key points before your exams and also to understand the clinical aspects of what we actually do. So let us start with the case scenario. Uh, the question says there is a preterm newborn delivered at 27 plus 6 weeks. So less than 28 week child. Point to note first. He is currently admitted in a newborn ICU and he is on IV fluids with otherwise stable vitals, normal imaging whenever it was done, not mentioned. On day 3 of life, so in the first week, he is found to have multiple episodes of apnea. Nia is a Greek word which stands for breath. If you put A in front of it, that is apnea, absence of breathing. With dips in saturation below 85% and occasional bradycardia also present. Most episodes respond to tactile stimulation except one where positive pressure ventilation was needed. What is the likely diagnosis in the child? Now, what, are, what is the information that we have here? This is a child newborn. The only risk factor in this newborn which seems to be right now is, we are not sure, it is a preterm child. Secondly, the child is having not one but multiple episodes of apnea and they are happening in the first week of life. Apnea is associated with bradycardia. It is associated with uh, dips in saturation as well. And most of the episodes are responding to tactile stimulation alone. One was a serious one which required positive pressure ventilation as well. What it means is that this is likely to be apnea in a child. What is the definition of apnea? We will talk about it. So, likely diagnosis in the child is apnea. Now, there are two broadly, from etiology point of view, there are broadly two types of apnea which are found. One is primary apnea where there is no external cause and then we have the secondary apnea. Secondary apnea will be secondary to diseases like uh, neonatal sepsis, neonatal jaundice, hypoglycemia, uh, CNS hemorrhage, perinatal asphyxia. There is a huge list which is given in literature. But if it is a preterm child and all the secondary, major secondary causes are ruled out, there is no evidence of that. The diagnosis of exclusion in preterm newborn is apnea of prematurity. So, likely diagnosis, possibly, we don't know till we have done the diagnosis, but possibly is it apnea of prematurity and we need to, in bracket I would say, we need to rule out the secondary causes. If it was an MCQ, the most likely diagnosis would have been apnea of prematurity. But in case of clinics, in case of raw wards, rounds, or if you have an exam, or if it is a short spotter case given to you, your diagnosis will be apnea in the newborn. So you will write apnea in unit. Possible etiology, likely to be apnea of prematurity. At the same time, you need to rule out the secondary causes. This is the first part of the case that I need to emphasize, right? What next you will do? Now, obviously, whenever you diagnose a child with apnea, I just told you, you need to rule out the secondary causes. So, you need to rule out the secondary causes. How you are going to do that? By doing some investigations. You will take, first of all, again, have a look at the detailed See, you did not attend the delivery. You are a resident who is managing. So, detailed antenatal and natal history will be taken. Was there any asphyxia? Was there any other risk factor in the mother? Which can sometimes have a delayed presentation also. Day 3 of life, it is not too far away from the uh, period of birth. So, detailed antenatal natal history, you will have a look. Anything which is likely to cause any uh, problem in the child, any asphyxia which was there, any delayed cry, any low APGAR score or some imaging needed or some intervention needed, you need to have a look at that. Any risk factors were present in the antenatal history, some imaging abnormalities which are now manifesting, you need to watch that. So, detailed antenatal natal history is important. Second thing, you will have a look at the current, you, you will perform a detailed examination in the child. So, second you will do detailed examination in the child. In detailed examination, you will look for all the uh, vitals in the child. You will look for all the reflexes in the child. You will also look for any bulging fontanelle in the child. Why am I saying bulging fontanelle? Because if there is an intracranial hemorrhage happening, 
there is a raised intracranial pressure you may find some bulging of the fontanelles to be present so detailed physical examination which includes the general which includes the systemic also you need to watch for any fluid intolerance developing in the child so you need to watch for that right so examination so history is important then detailed examination is important and thirdly you will perform investigations what investigations will be needed to rule out secondary causes you need to look check for the blood glucose 